I really couldn't see myself doing anything else. And in a way, I almost feel like um, this sounds really crazy, but I wouldn't be able to live if I didn't perform. Um, when I s stop a job and I'm out of work, I always get sick. So there's, I really think that you know, for me to be a happy, complete, and whole person, I have to be doing my job, which is performing. So it's just a part of me. The dancer's passion to perform is something that Jesse Factor knows a lot about. Jesse is in the Broadway touring company of Cats. Meeting him reminded me of a quote by George Balanchine, a famous choreographer. Dance is music made visible. So what creates this passion? What is it about dance that inspires such excitement and dedication? As a professional dancer myself, I've thought a lot about these things. My journey has been different than most dancers, as I was born with spina bifida. When I was young, there were no dance companies for people with disabilities. Yet my need to express myself through dance and music was so strong that I created my own company in order to do it. Dancing Wheels, which was founded over 25 years ago, uses the talents of stand-up and sit-down dancers. The one thing we all share is a love and commitment to our art. But is passion and love of dance enough? What else goes into a dancer's life? How do professional dancers prepare and maintain their artistic skills? To answer these questions and more, we followed Jesse as he prepared for a performance of Cats. It's 6 o'clock and Jesse is preparing for his transformation into Shimbleshanks. He talked about his background and training. I did summer programs at colleges. I did one at Carnegie Mellon University, which has a pretty well-known performing arts program. And then I did another one the next summer. The first one I did between my sophomore and junior year. And the second one I did between my junior and senior year of high school. The second one I did at NYU, the Tisch School in New York City. And um, I really, really, they were both for musical theater. So it was training in dance, acting, and uh, voice. And I really liked the Tisch program. so. I applied there. It's a BFA program at New York University's Tisch School of the Arts, and it was a very disciplined, <laughs> strenuous program of uh, acting, singing, dancing, music theory, everything, all rolled into one. So it was very, it was kind of interdisciplinary, you know? You learn a lot of everything. To do musical theater nowadays, you have to dance, and you have to sing, and you have to act. You have to do everything. So it was a perfect program for me. Um, and that's what I did. And then during the summers, I would work, you know, summer stock jobs, or I worked at a theme park. Um, I feel like that was as much training as school was, too, was just getting out there and working and seeing what it was like. So um, with my training in particular, I would feel comfortable going to a singer's call, going to a dancer's call, or if they want me to come in and read something from the script, you know, I have the training to do that, too. I just want to have a loaded artillery of ammunition so whenever they say oh can you do this yeah can you do this yeah Jesse stressed the need to be versatile and ready to tackle any new skill but we wondered if there was one aspect of dance that was most important if he had to choose what would he advise aspiring young dancers ballet is the best training ever you can take ballet for years and then learn how to do something else dance wise but I think it's a lost art form that people aren't really taking as much as they used to. I definitely would say get in a ballet class because you will definitely not be sorry. You, it will just it will change your life. It's the hardest and most disciplined. It's really a sport. Like I would say, I definitely recommend it. You know, it's not all pink tights and tutus. It's hard work, sweat, tears, and blood. I'm not lying. It's hard. You still see Mikhail Baryshnikov at Steps on Broadway taking ballet class. You still see, you know, Desmond Richardson. Everybody is taking, it's still taking class, especially dancers. It's never, it's routine, it's every day. Jesse's training and background seem to be aimed at performing. How about the rest of his education? What about studies that aren't directly related to the performing arts? All academic subjects are important. If you want to be a performer, everything you learn in school is going to help you. History, math, English, social sciences. I mean, what if you're doing, um, what if you're doing a play by Shakespeare, you know? 
it helps to know the history of the time or if you're doing a Moliere play, if you're doing Death of a Salesman, you know, everything you learn, you can put towards that, you know, so I feel like, especially as a performer, the more educated you are, the more powerful you are, and the more you're going to help, that's going to help your individuality because you're going to be like, oh, I know, I know this from so-and-so's English class and I, I did this sonnet before, you know, so everything, everything you learn can help you. Jesse seemed very comfortable with his life as a dancer. We wondered if he ever had stage fright. Did he ever have doubts or insecurities? I think everybody in their right minds has had a doubt at one or two times in their life. And it's important to really um, analyze those and give weight to them. But in the end, if you wake up in the morning and your excitement and your desire to perform outweighs your doubts, then you know you should. Um, some of the best performers I know gave up and decided to do something else. Um, so it really doesn't have anything to do with talent. I'll tell you that right off the bat. It just has to do about drive and desire. Some of the least talented people I know had a lot of determination and a lot of drive and you know, are doing quite well. Um, but I think doubts, like everyone has doubts, and you just have to weigh them. Um, but there definitely is something deep down inside. Like I said earlier about performing, like I know I have to do it to be happy, and I know I have to do it to live. And that if I had a desk job or some other kind of job, I don't think I would be happy. That's for other people, you know? Other people are cut out to be accountants. Other keep, people are cut out to have a stable kind of life. But that's not for me, and I know that. But I only know that because... There was a time when I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And I analyzed it and investigated it, and then I decided, you know. So I think to have self-doubt can be a good thing. If it helps you realize that it isn't what you want to do, great. You know, what do you want to do? But if it helps you make it, it'll only make you stronger if you do have doubts. You do have to ask because that way you find the answer. And if, you know, you didn't ask, you'd never know. And you have to investigate that and analyze that. Many times, a famous artist will inspire others. How does Jesse feel about using others as a model for his own work? I think you can watch a certain artist and say, I really like the way she uses that, or I really like the way he does that. But it's more important to locate that within yourself and say, how would I approach that, or how would I do that? Because that's what's interesting, the individuality, and you gotta, I find that the most thrilling when I see someone who's just, who has, I mean, everybody, everybody is, um, everybody can, can be sexy, everybody can be strong, everybody can, can be a certain way, but the way they do it, that's what's, in that's what's interesting. So I would say that it's just, the indiv individuality is like the most thrilling, and find that in yourself and find the way you would do it, you know? Mimicry is a good thing, but learning how to do it yourself is better. While Jesse's career right now is exciting, it's also repetitious. He performs in the same show over and over again as Katz tours the country. Does he ever get tired of it? How does he keep it fresh? The, the way you stay up, the way you stay fresh is, for me, I pick something every show that I say, okay, this is what I'm going to work on. Whether it's, I'm going to be the most feline I've ever been this show, or I'm really going to try and hit this show vocally and sing it the best I can, or I'm going to work on m this certain part of the show, or, you know what I mean? I just, for me, I have to pick something specific each show to work on, and that keeps it alive for me. A lot of our conversation with Jesse focused on him as an individual performer. But yet, when an audience sees Cats, what they see is a total ensemble performance. Beyond that, the production also depends on many, many people that the audience never sees. Well, a musical is probably one of the most collaborative um, creations of, of any, because we have, like just with Cats, we'll have our dance captain, we'll have our music director, and we'll have our stage manager, and they all work together. So. Um, there's all these elements that go together, and um, you know, on stage they all come together at night. But um, separately, you know, we'll have music rehearsals, and we'll have dance rehearsals, and then anything else. Like technically, we have to see the stage manager about 
But, um, and then you have to deal with the other actors as well. So it really is a collaborative process. There's no one person that you can say, you know, without them we couldn't do the show. Um, everybody is important to this show, you know. We, and besides the, um, besides just us on stage, we have the musicians in the pit, we have our crew, our technical crew that puts together the set every night. Um, or every time we go to a new city. So um, it's probably one of the most collaborative efforts of any because there's just so many different aspects of the, of the show. We're all working together to create cats. After meeting Jesse, we also talked to some young aspiring dancers. We wanted to find out what dance meant to them. Definitely helps you become more aware of yourself, which is important when you're younger. You, don't, you have a better opinion of yourself. <laughs> well, the only thing about dance is you focus more on your body, which may not be the best thing at times, but it helps you be more aware of yourself so you can just get along better with other people because you know who you are. I'm not as afraid of what people will say about me. It's just, it's helped me be a little less shy anyways. <laughs> I think I was more dedicated at my studies because I was able to force myself to study since I was knew I had to come to class at night. So I was able to focus more on what I was doing instead of being distracted by the TV or computer. Well, because I take dance like almost every single day of the week, it it helped me a lot. Because I I've always wanted to dance since I was three, and you know, I've been I've danced every single day from there on. I go to Revolutions Dance Academy in Garfield Heights. I take tap, jazz, and ballet over there, and then I am in a hip hop group, a jazz tight hip hop group, and then I'm over here with Dancing Wheels. I've made a few friends from being a Dancing Wheels, and I've also have friends um, at my other dance schools and stuff. Does every dancer dream of a career like Jesse Factors? Is there value in dance training beyond becoming a professional? Jennifer told us her plans. I want to become an occupational therapist and I like to incorporate dance somehow into it. But it's kind of one of those things where I like to just incorporate it in my career instead of making it my full career. Jesse Factor shared some wonderful insights about his life as a professional dancer. He has worked long and hard and success didn't happen overnight. At some point, he was like the young dancers we met who are just at the beginning of their journey. They may decide to follow his path and pursue dancing as their life work. But even if they don't, all the dancers we met had one thing in common. Dance will always remain important in their lives. It enriches and touches everything they do. Funding for this series was provided by the Northeastern Ohio Education Association. NEOEA members include elementary and secondary teachers, university professors, and support professionals working to provide great public schools for every child. Teaching materials for Shortcuts to Happiness are available on the web at pbs4549.org shortcuts.